No chickens. <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to our Q&A. Now, one thing we've learned while doing these videos is the one thing we're not good at is sitting down and talking directly to camera. We find it awkward, uncomfortable, we end up looking at the screen next to it instead of looking at the lens and we're just not big fans of it. So we want to do this Q&A, but we're not going to do it sat here for the whole time. We're going to do a couple of questions here and then we're just going to go out and go to our happy places, go to where we feel comfortable to answer questions. We might be walking to a park or on the boat or being somewhere else, just not sitting down talking to camera like this. Or well, you get a really rambly response just like that. <laughs> that was really good. You better put that in. You better put your snide comments in. I want to see who you really are. Who am I really? The devil. <laughs> that was bloody quick. <laughs> First off, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Ellie, I'm from Cambridge originally, and I am a Deputy Stage Manager, which is essentially a show caller in theatre and events. This is your half hour call, you have 30 minutes. Thank you. And let's do 60.5. Go. I'm Ben, I'm from a little town in Thatcham in Berkshire, um, and I am a stage manager, which essentially means Ellie's boss. musical called School of Rock. We were supposed to go straight onto a, another musical called Bat Out of Hell, but we went straight into lockdown. Okay, it's so bright in here, I need sunglasses. Okay. These. It's these. Finally. Yeah. We're in the theme of Barbie here. No, we're not. We're in the theme of Sailing Rum Punch. Right. Okay, it was much too bright and too hot in there, so we've moved it inside. Welcome to the next living room! <laughs> so we realised very early on that we weren't going to be able to get through lockdown without each other so we moved in and that's how our relationship blossomed. That's gross but it's true. It's true. Oh my god tell me you just went. <laughs> okay yeah so we moved into a little flat in Waterloo for the majority of lockdown um, that's basically where Ben decided to spend most of his time looking at boats online. He introduced me to a lot of YouTube channels which was amazing and I definitely saw myself doing that too but I obviously knew nothing about boats still learning that's kind of the start of the journey yeah <laughs> I sailed with my family when I was young we had access to a 40 foot steel catch which was an absolutely fantastic boat it was all weather any time of the year it was brilliant and that's where I developed my love for sailing after school and university and work um, my family kept sailing, but I, was, I, I couldn't join them because I had to focus on my career and everything like that. Um, but always in the back of my head, I always thought, you know what, one day I'm going to buy a boat. In those early days, it was always going to be retirement, kind of later on in life. And it, I think it took lockdown to really be like, you know what, why are you waiting? I watched lots of videos like Uma and Ran, who were just buying their boats and living on them, and they just showed me that it can be done and it can be done now so that was all I needed that tiny little nudge was what it took to set us on this path Ellie question number one where are you living whilst you're doing out the boat so we're currently in a town called Burnham on Crouch in Essex and it is not far from the North Sea which is useful Rummy's in a marina just down the road it's about a three minute drive or a 20 minute walk if you go down the nice seafront way we live with my brother Dan, his wife Jen, their dog Charlie, their two cats, Lenny and Frank, and the three chickens, Patty, Mary, and Gloria. There was one more bit that died, I can't remember, I just know the dead one. <laughs> we did toy the idea of living on the boat, but due to the extensive refit, we decided not to, and we're very lucky to have a spare room here. A really good thing with Burnham that is commutable to London, so we can get the train directly to Liverpool Street, which makes our lives a lot easier. So Ben, why is there a spider at the bottom of our screen? Oh, well, Ellie, it's not actually a spider, it's a sea urchin. 
Little Urch is our mascot, but we'll get to that story when we talk about why we named the boat Rump Punch. It's a good one. So Ellie, why is the boat called Rum Punch? Well, Ben, it all stems back to our very wonderful holiday we took to St Lucia in the Caribbean. Where we decided to go on a boat trip one day. After one or two rum punches, we then went snorkelling. Not the best decision we ever made, because at the end of the snorkelling trip, I stood up and stood on a sea urchin. What? That must have hurt. <laughs> it did. It really, really hurt. I couldn't walk for at least three days. <laughs> no, but seriously, I did. I stood on a sea urchin. And, um, yeah. It kind of all stemmed from there. We were reeling off names for the boat. Um, Rum Punch came up as a kind of joke. I think I said it to you in the car. And I loved it. You loved it. It, it just kind of stuck, didn't it? It just sounded like the name of the boat. And it comes with a funny story where I got basically obliterated because I had two Rum Punches and I got stung by a sea urchin. And we both think, well, I think, I got spiked. I literally yeah. got spiked. That's brilliant! The holiday was just, it couldn't have been more perfect. We ended up going to St Lucia for three weeks. Just over a week of that was with my brother and his wife. They got married there. They told us on the first day we got there, they were like, oh, what are you doing Tuesday? Because we're getting married and we need you to be witnesses. And it was just a perfect holiday. Rum Punch was the theme of the holiday. We just drank so much of it. And we just had so many fun stories to tell after each one. <laughs> it's something that means so much to us but it also just carries this fantastic story and we wanted to take that with us wherever we go. And the lurch will forever be imprinted on my foot and on our boat. Exactly. A footprint, uh, if you mind. <laughs> yeah. Follow me to our home. <laughs> That's not going in. Okay. than ripping apart an old one? Well, first of all, quite frankly, we can't afford a house. We don't want a house because we don't know where to live. Our lifestyle takes us all over the country, all over the world, and we don't want to be tied down to one place. So we did want a base where we can have and keep all our stuff, but it's also somewhere where we can take with us or we can move around where we want to get. Why do we buy a new boat? Same reason, we can't afford. Also, the main reason is I love DIY. I really like getting old things that are, there's nothing really wrong with them, but they're just a bit old and then making them really fresh and new. And I think that's the important thing on this project is we've got this previously, not unloved, but you know, a boat that's been let go a little bit and we just want to give it a completely new lease of life and make it reborn essentially. What was wrong with the original interior layout and woodwork that required a complete gutting? How is your new design going to be different from your original layout? There was nothing at all wrong with the initial layout of the boat. When we first bought her, she was definitely designed to be taken on more weekend sailing trips, um, very traditional um, layouts, um, but it is a 50 year old boat. We knew when we bought her, we would make her our own and do little bits to it to create the home that we wanted. But as we started to dig, more and more things became apparent. A lot of the wood was just kind of rotten and we just wanted to get all that grime off and renew the whole boat. God, this boat is so gross. Is she going to be so clean when we finish with her? The more we kind of got rid of, the more we made space and basically got left with this entire shell of a boat. And that gave us more motivation to basically make our own boat. Oh, what are we doing to our boat? 
We didn't want to sacrifice any home comforts that we love doing, like being able to sit on a sofa and watch TV. We love cooking, so we wanted to make sure we had a nice galley. Um, and we knew we'd be sacrificing space, of course, but being able to basically create our own design of the boat made sure that we could have all of our home comforts and have everything that we would normally have in a house. So this is the starboard side of the boat. Our plan at the moment is to have a sort of stuck sofa that sort of comes to about where the white finishes there, maybe slightly further out, to give it some depth. That's going to be the sofa that will pull out to uh, a double bed halfway, and then there's going to be a bench here that also pulls out so it meets in the middle and creates a double bed when and if needed. Storage, and then, well, like I said, a bench here, and then we're going to cut this down and then we'll have our nav table coming round here and that's going to be our little snug area with our, with our nav table that can multi-function as our eating table, our working table it's going to be fab I can see it can you? I can see it <laughs> yeah, it was quite, quite nice because I think we'll, when it's not extended it is just the sofa and the bench we've still got the space you can see now and we're going to bring the floor out all the way to the end, each end. So we're hopefully going to make a bit more space than we currently have. It is great, it's got a lot of storage at the moment, that's what it's built for, but we like space more than storage. <laughs> yeah, I think that's But we're fair. still going to design wisely so that we can have as much storage as we need. Lovely. We're still throwing ideas out there to finalise our design. Therefore, things are still changing and nothing is set in stone. But like I said, comfort, space and a well-designed galley are high on the list for us. And we're getting close to beginning the build. So stay tuned for more updates on our design and please keep those questions coming. We'll be doing more Q&As as we continue to progress through this exciting project. Now join us in two weeks where we disconnect the engine ready for removal.